our next speaker is uh, the postdoc fellow at the Distributed System and Autonomy Group of the Risk Lab at the COS. Her today's talk is uh, Agile Control of Underwater Robots. So I welcome Dr. Aslihan Kashi. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for this kind of introduction, Salman. And thank you so much, Professor Eric Ferran and Shink Yupart for giving me opportunity to talk about my research today. So uh, I saw speakers have been talking a little bit about their background. Uh, so I will do the same. And uh, I will also give a brief introduction uh, about our lab and, uh, and about the Red Sea. That is a phenomenal location just near the coast. So now we have here uh, this logo presenting the Robotics Intelligence Systems and Control Lab. And uh, the, these three are the topics that uh, emphasizing the different kind of directions trust of our lab. Uh, and the related projects are leaded by the Professor Ferron and Park. So our group, the Distributed Systems and Autonomy is relatively new and still we are receiving new, new members. So uh, we have two postdocs, including me, uh, five PhDs, and two master's students. And we are working on different aspects of the robotics, such as manipulators, uh, reinforcement learning, game theory, and underwater robotics, uh, which today's talk is going to be kind of mainly in this direction, because uh, Red Sea is just a unique place and there are many things to explore. And marine robotics, one of the hottest uh, hot topic uh, in the robotics area, and uh, that allows to investigate from dif different perspective. So we are located in the in Saudi Arabia, and we touch half of the Red Sea, uh, whereas on the other side of the Red Sea, uh, there are several countries that split the coastline, but Red Sea has it from top to the bottom. So therefore, we attract the global research with Red Sea. However, we are a small community here. So in order to support this um, global research, we have to have the uh, global quality structures, which should abide international accreditation standards and close partnerships with the research institutions. So there are currently a few projects with Neom Ocean X, five deep ex uh, expedition, and I believe there are uh, many more projects. So these projects require to uh, include different disciplines of oceanography, such as uh, biology, geography, physics, uh, chemist, chemistry, and engineering. And the reason uh, for that is in order to explore, assess, describe, uh, quantify and explain the diversity of the habitats and organisms, we need to start uh, with mapping uh, with the geomorphology of the substrate. So the composition of this substrate is including the, its inclination and the depth of the sea. And with this one, we have the uh, important parameters of the biological co uh, communities that lives in their environment. So the search uh, might be on the moving, non-moving, living or dead organisms, as well as with their located habitats that defines water salinity, uh, temperature and depth and some other parameters. So it is important to note here um, and give a few features of the Red Sea. So uh, Red Sea is the northernmost tropical sea and it is the warmest sea on the earth. The summer surface temperature between uh, 26 degrees in the north and 30 degrees Celsius in the south. And even in the uh, deepest part of the Red Sea, uh, it doesn't, the temperature doesn't go below 21 and a half Celsius. It has 3000 meter depth and there are more than 1,400 uh, living stony coral species. So why I'm giving these details? Because we need to know the environment, that's what kind of robotics, underwater robots that uh, 
required to investigate this environment. So from the Ms. Collins talk and Professor Kristen's talk, it is clear that the ocean presents an unusually compelling yet the challenging context for advanced observational systems. So because of the distinct dearth of the data on both physical and biological phenomena on, uh, below the ocean, uh, understanding the ocean and the ecosystem uh, dynamics remains critically incomplete. Therefore, approaches to collecting and of uh, revealing these data, uh, we must address the significant challenges on motion control, sensing, navigation, and communication in the inhospitable, uh, uncertain, and dynamic ocean environments. So the underwater vehicles can be divided to two, uh, manned and unmanned vehicles. And the unmanned vehicles can be divided uh, uh, as um, autonomous underwater vehicles and remotely operated vehicles. So the main difference between AUVs and the ROVs is the, using the tether. And AUVs can be pre-programmed or they can be logically driven. Of course, AUVs can be also linked with the surface. Uh, I mean, the device can be linked uh, with the surface uh, with using um, acoustic modem or uh, RF or optical link. Moreover, AUVs are more used in the military actions or um, exploring the unknown marine environment. So for going too deep of the Red Sea, we clearly need the ROVs. And the perfect ROV would have the few important characteristics, uh, such as the minimal tether diameter, uh, very small in size, and high data uh, transmission, high da data pipeline uh, for sensor output. So the first ROVs are actually developed in 1960s, which one you see on the right top uh, by US Navy. And later on between 1980s and 1990s, uh, there was a grown, grown um, industrial interest. Since then recently from the Stanford University uh, with the group of Usama Hatib, the humanoid robot is released. So the communication and control of underwater vehicles is a complex issue. So the basic issues involved with underwater vehicle power uh, and control can be divided into three parts, which is the power source for the vehicle. So the vehicle either can be charged on the surface or it can be charged with the docking, docking system under the sea. Second part can be the autonomy. So the device can be full autonomous, semi-autonomous, it can be remotely controlled or with the teleoperation. And the final part is the communication link with the device and the surface. So depending on electrical or fiber optic, it can be a hardwire communication or it can be acoustic communication via underwater analog or digital modems, or it can be optical communication while a um, vehicle is on the surface, or it can be radio frequency communication while the vehicle is on or near the surface. By explaining this, we have three technical contribution with the Red Sea Research Center and between our group. So the first one is underwater communication for multi-robots. Uh, coordination. Uh, second one is long-term autonomy that defines the uh, robot navigation and the battery life. And the last one that more I will concentrate on my topic today will be the robust and agile control. So the main applications uh, that we are looking for is the environmental monitoring that may include the population growth of the uh, organisms or that can be environmental detection, environmental parameters detection, such as temperature, salinity, and depth. Uh, moreover, we are also working on a project for the underwater manipulations that you see uh, one of the examples uh, were given by Professor Charlotte House and Professor Shinky Park yesterday for the coral uh, restoration. Uh, 
and it can be also sample collection. So in 1967 by Louis Armstrong, uh, there was a song named What a Wonderful World. So, and by inspiring from the nature and underwater habitats, I would like to name this one as a what a fractional world uh, as a researcher who is work, working on this area. So uh, in the in process control, more than 95% uh, percent of the control loops are based on the PI, PD, or PID type of controllers. Uh, that's why uh, this is the maybe this is the main motivation that can be focused on this topic. So the fractional order controllers are just a more generalized topic than the integer order uh, PID controllers. Here you see on the bottom two mathematical equations that describe the integral operator, um, the fractional integral with a power of lambda, while the derivative operator with, a, uh, with an arbitrary order of mu. So the main benefit of this type of controllers are they give more degree of freedom, which comes from the arbitrary orders. And um, you can define more uh, smooth responses of the system uh, that gives more robust and agile control. And on the right hand side, there's the generalization of this fractional PID controllers uh, that's based on the order it can be proportional, proportional derivative, proportional integral, or PID. So the half order P, uh, fractional PID controllers, the frequency response is given as here. So if we think about basic trigonometric equations and the Euler expansion, we can easily actually get the response of the uh, of the system. So uh, rather than the cl classical uh, integer order systems in the fractional order dom domain, the phase response is varying from uh, minus 90 degrees to 90 degrees rather than just staying in this range. So I give a brief introduction about the fractional order controller, but to solve uh, these derivative operators, uh, we need the fractional cal calculus. So what is a fractional calculus is, it is just a misnomer. So we should better define this is an integration and differentiation of arbitrary orders is a more uh, appropriate definition. So uh, this is a quite old, uh, old mathematical area uh, regarding maybe 300 back, 300 years back, and it started with, uh, the, between the communication uh, communication between the L'Hopital and the Leibniz, that L'Hopital is questioning what can happen if the, if the order of the derivative is half. Later on, there, there, was, there, there were many other researchers coming out, such as uh, Bernhard Riemann, Joseph Lewell, Alexei Letnikov, Anton Grunwald. So from this definition, we can clearly see that the integer order derivatives are surely a kind of special subset of the fractional order derivatives. So if you look from the mechanical and electrical perspective, to emulate the fractional order behavior in the mechanical systems, uh, we look the force and the, the correlation between the force and mass. For the spring case, it is just the proportional. But if you look at the viscous friction and the inertia, based on the their definition, uh, they can be defined as the fractional order elements. And for the analog circuit point of view, the fractional order differentiation and integration ca uh, can be defined with the correlation uh, between voltage and current. So in the generalized form of the mechanical systems and electrical systems in the fractional domain, they can have the, uh, the mass can have the power of alpha while the current is same. And the alpha should be the real number. However, it can be also complex, but which gives us more uh, complex systems. So later on, there were 
many more studies, but the very well known knowns are performed in the beginning and middle of 19th century by given Riemann Lewell and Gurumwald Letnikov. So as I said, fractional order control and fractional calculus, calculus has a long history back, but there are not much practical application in this area, especially if you look the robotics point of view. So here are a few examples that I will give. So the first one is hexapod uh, robot that, uh, as you see uh, on the top side, the robot body is divided to n identical systems and uh, linear spring and damper systems are just defined on two sides with the circuitry, uh, body compliance and ground compliance. The general control architecture of the hexabot uh, robot is presented just uh, at the bottom of the presentation. Uh, so the trajectory planning is evaluated in the Cartesian format, but the control uh, response is performed in the joint space. Therefore, uh, it requires an inverse kinematic model in the forward path. The base algorithm considers only the uh, position and velocity feedback. And uh, to improve the response of this architecture, the feedback loop uh, with information of the foot ground uh, feedback uh, interaction force is required. Of course, in this case, uh, we need to, uh, in order to run the foot force feedback, we need to simplify the G1 and G2. And here it is clearly seen that for the foot force feedback, we need a proportional, which is defined as K, KP1, and we need the derivative operators. So my second example is from the industry. So recently Citroën and Peugeot uh, make a study with, with the fractional order calculus that use this fractional calculus in their uh, suspension system. However, these are the recent studies. They don't give much details, uh, but the point is we are happy that the fractional calculus is being a part in the industry. So the last part, uh, the last example uh, of the applications are the marine robotics. So I recently see just one example, experimental example in the marine robotics that uses the fractional calculus. So here, they, depending on the desired um, heating, like desired um, motion, they are using the, they are modeling the fractional order control and the tuning parameters with the closed, uh, cloud based quantum uh, genetic algorithm. So as we see here on the left-hand side, the figure illust illustrates the simulating model of pitch angle using fractional order PID and comparing it with the classical integer order PID controllers. Uh, this step response is depicted shown on the right-hand side, and it is clear that they have the same rise time. However, the fractional order PID controller is smaller uh, overshoot with same settling time. Another result is with the disturbance of ocean cur current uh, is simulated by white nose as shown as here, uh, and further demonstrated the better performance of the fractional order PID than the traditional PID controllers. So this, this was all my talk. Thank you so much. Thank you for the wonderful talk. Now the floor is open for Q&A session. Thank you for the presentation. Is there a generalized way to, or approach to uh, identify the values of alpha and lambda, the orders for the fractional PID for the integral and the, the differential one? So in the transfer function, the tuning parameters can be by the selection of the gain and the orders. So it depends which one you require. Uh, in your uh, control system. Either you are focused on the gain margin or you are focused on, for example, the phase response or what. So based on that, you can either select the order or you can either select the gain parameters to uh, redefine the orders. Because by 
uh, if you know your system that will be that should work in specific range, then you more or less uh, can tune the orders. But you can just uh, get the parameters of the game. But if you look from the game perspective that you want to reach, then you do the opposite. So th that is depends what kind of control system you would like to uh, design. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your talk. I had a question on the integral term. I assume this the integral term is the one being fractionally integrated rather than the traditional integral term, right? And the proportional derivative remain the same as the classical PID. Um, now, from, from insight, the integral term just carries the history of the signal. What's the analogy of taking a partial integral or a half partial integral in terms of what happens to the signal? Wouldn't it be just a scaled down version of the history of the signal or am I missing something? Hopefully my question is clear. I can. Um, so the half order derivative or other 0 0.3 order or any other order. So fractional, if the order is arbitrary, then depends on the approximation that you are applying. The two examples that I showed, the riemann lewell and grunwald Letnikov, uh, that gives you the past, the memory, and the future effects. And with the arbitrary orders, actually, you can more precisely estimate the system response, which is more, um, which is more expected in the real systems. So we identify, we give an input signal. But with this um, input signal in the integer order case, we just come close to that. But if the fractional order case, you make the discretization much smaller so that you become uh, much closer the, the, to the desired um, response. So that is depends on how you approximate by discretization, by net, um, circuit networks, or uh, some other, any other. Okay, that, that's a good point. So you're decreasing the discretization without changing the sampling time. And by that, you have a more accurate estimation of the integral yeah, that's, without sacrificing the speed of the sampling time. Um, that can be one of the part. So that is depends which performance of the control system that you wanna uh, you want to improve. So either you want to improve the um, sa uh, sampling time or you want to improve the gain response or overshooting. But uh, that is, in general, you got much better response than in integer order case. So here the important point is that you need to clearly identify your design parameters and what is your desired output. Okay, you have more control parameters than the integer order systems, but the systems can be more bulky and it may cost more and it can be more complex so that it may consume more energy. So if I were to teach fractional order controllers to students and the graduate, I would go straight to the frequency domain. And can I, and for me, a fractional order integrator would be an, to would be aligned with a slope. Yes, minus 20. Minus. Alpha, 20 times alpha. That's yes, the right. Yeah. And uh, so can I push the concept and indeed tell them, okay, we're gonna do the obstacle course, like the usual stuff, um, uh, but we just happen to have like slopes that are not only just minus one or minus two or minus three, but they can be minus one half. Yeah, sure. So I mentioned here the order can be just zero to one, but it can be also higher order. It can be one to two, two to three. So that is depends how you describe your systems again. Then in such a case, you can either cascade or you can approximate the final um, total order. So the slope will be again minus 20 times alpha in the dec uh, decibel per decade. Uh, I just show here in a different perspective, I think, my results. And then otherwise, uh, do all the traditional things such as gain phase margins, cross it over with a minus one slope and things like that. I mean, do they all work like, uh, like in, uh, you know, super classical uh, control taught 
has taught in uh, the most recommendable U.S. universities um, or elsewhere? <laughs> well, it can be both. So fractional is just more precise than the integer order case. But uh, when you are working, actually, we are not total far away the integer order case. We can also approximate this derivative with the integer order approximations. Like in the circuit point of view, um, if I'm doing the filter, this is a kind of filter, right? The, I can just locate the zeros and poles in the uh, plane so that I can, based on how I uh, use or locate those zeros and poles, I can either extend my network structure or I can locate like... Um, so that I can get more precise response to the desired one, or I can get mu much, I can use lower network structures so that the slope will be wide and the error will be wide, but still it will be hopefully better than the integer order one. So it can be a combination. You can still use the integer order approximation and you can avoid the definition of the fractional derivative from Riemann Lowell or Gurumad Letnikov. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Kashi.